Wow. I mean, is it like fitting the philosophy to the ward or the ward to the philosophy? Well, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you've, talk, you've been talking about how little you care. Because that's a philosophy, isn't it? Care. Yeah, but it's philosophy that's been taught for decades now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. taught, yeah. That's our... But re- having it realised is just a yeah, thing, Yeah, it's the theory into the practice, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it's okay having the theory behind things, but practically it may not be able to be implemented. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's loads. And you're sitting with such a big ward. Yeah. Cases, you've got minimal staff. Yeah. Very unsafely staffed. And doctor wise use is not... <laughs> so basically, it's not a good foundation to build on. I thought yeah. when you all pulled together, it could be... Were you here when we had that trial where we had, when it was west and east and it was supposed to be like two different areas? No, no. Yeah, that was interesting. Did it work or...? Well, that was the idea behind that was to, you know, break down the, the, mu- the hugeness of the ward. Yeah. You know. But then you still share in one clinical room, aren't you? That's right, yeah. You still in one, so you're not really... Yeah. Except for five there. Yeah. What about primary nursing? Have you got any ideas about that? Uh, would that be suitable for a orthopaedic? In regards to what? Well, the uh, primary nursing initiative, you know, where you have um, your patients and, you know, the name yeah. nurse. The name nurse, no. To be honest, no. Because I don't think it works in, in practice, purely because you've got such a, a changeover of shifts. Um, and you saw that kind of thing, and sometimes, even though it's been quite good, I mean, if you're on a late shift, you've admitted somebody then you'd see them first thing in the morning. There's more work yeah. people have days off. People go sick, they're changes and shit. It's not yeah, always yeah, practical and people have questioned me, you know, are you my name's nurse? And to be honest, there's not that kind of, 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 of nursing going on at the moment. Yeah. It's not practical and yeah. you know, with the number of staff and they're off the ward. Yeah. It's a good idea to have as in to continue care. Continuation of care in that respect. And and maybe seeing a familiar face would stop a lot of confusion from occurring, as in from the unfamiliar environment, a lot of more friendly faces. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's practical in this particular time no. at the moment on the board. And what about the actual physical environment that we have patients in? You know, mm. the actual layout of the ward and all that sort of thing. Say about the mixed sex bays. Mixed uh, yeah. You know, you, you, you're, re- you're providing quite personal intricate care on a open ward setting with your barrier yeah. and a thin flimsy curtain. That's right. So you can still hear what's going on behind the curtain. Yeah. So that's the only kind of barrier, barrier you've got for privacy. Yeah. yeah. Which isn't. I mean, have you got any sort of ideas about how you change the ward? It's hard for me to say because I haven't got really the experience or managerial knowledge behind me enough at this stage in my career to really have anything intelligent to say about it. You've probably got yeah. a better idea than me of how you do it because I've only seen things and it's qualifying for 18 months yeah. now. Yeah. So I can only see things for what they are with my limited knowledge I've got. Mm. So it's just quite hard to say, really. I mean, in idealistic ways, yeah. you could do things. I mean, again, it's not practical. Yeah. It? The ideas can be yeah. floating around all over yeah. the place. But it's, you know, it's just the financial restraints. Uh, and basically, the, the space, the area that you've got to work within is not enough yeah. as well. And the cubicles are taken up with usually your barrier nurses anyway. Um, it would be ideal to have kind of a lot more cubicles yeah. for people who are going to need a lot more private care. Those who are basically quite independent need to toddle off to the bathroom, close the door, and, and, you know, and shower and wash in private. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like you say, you, you've got this confused patient saying they tend to be in bay ones, don't they? Yes, yes. With all the um, commotion going on. The noise, yeah, different people coming to see them, um, a whole different thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's not always, so, so, so what's the state of affairs would you say it was? You've got this confused patient in a bed, that everything's going on, uh, and... It's not an idealistic situation, and the subject area we cover is complex enough. Um, I think it's quite hard for a lot of people to, to come to terms with being in hospital for one, maybe being away from their partner. It could be away from their husband, they've slept in the same bed with for like 50 years, and then yeah, they've got a 
um, rehabilitated and assisted with this problem, they, the recovery rate, I think it's just quite a high mortality rate, yeah. and that's people with fractured hips for lots of reasons, you know, oh, getting okay. pneumonia infections, secondary infections, and if we pump them for, with all the, you know, other medications and that, yeah. that um, also can affect their recovery, yeah. and their okay. mobility and their independence. Because the anaesthetic they have as well, the amount of drugs yeah. that the system during the operation, um, the brutality of the operation itself is yeah. very um, trauma driven. They usually come back with more um, problems from when they started, maybe bruised, because if you've seen the way that they do operate on them, not in yeah, an yeah. abusive way, but no, it's, 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 it's a typical it's a very typical operation, operation yeah. Yeah. Uh, which can then slow down the recovery. I mean, you know, the anaesthesia side of it as well. That's right, yeah. People will temporarily where well, we saw the other night and we somebody who was totally with it and had an operation come back and overnight right. really just change. That's it. And it affects their activities of daily living, yeah. that their um, continence, their yeah. mobility, <coughs> um, <coughs> e even eating, nutrition, everything gets affected and all those factors together will influence yeah. the outcome of that. Because yeah. I definitely believe your mind and your physicality is just joined together. That's right, and if yeah. your mind isn't working and, and taking over properly, then you physically you will yeah. So there's an acknowledgement then that these people do, because they're more demanding on their activities, they do their living, they're going to need more time yeah. and things like that. So, yeah. Definitely. Okay then, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, that, was that was an excellent first interview that I did during my MSc um, research into care of the elderly confusion, the culture of the ward, the perspectives of nurses and trying to identify a number of themes um, to analyse and then come up with some ideas on how to care for elderly confused on a busy acute ward. Uh, this particular nurse was excellent, I thought. She covered nearly all aspects um, in a very fluid way. We discussed all sorts of areas. Um, so th this was um, a good example of one of the interviews that I take, I'd um, uh, d done over the next uh, month or so. Uh, obviously going back as well with um, uh, a transcribed interview, going over points with the participants as well. Um, this problem still exists today, Care of the Confused. It wouldn't have changed a great deal in 2018. So though this was done sort of 18 years ago, many of the problems um, of caring for the confused elderly person following hip surgery especially um, is relevant today. In fact, because of all the problems the NHS have been experiencing over the last 10 years, we could find that these sort of things are even worse because you need time, money, you need to, time and money to uh, help perhaps change the culture of a ward to initiate education and training into this problem and to work on attitudes which often influence the care of this very vulnerable group. Um, all sorts of things in other interviews were to emerge as well um, with themes like abuse and all this sort of thing and how people speak to the, to the confused patient, how the confused patient is often exposed to the chemical cosh medication. They've already experienced an awful lot of brutality in a way as pointed out by the participant there. The surgery itself is quite brutal, um, physical, um, when you do a hip replacement. I've actually of course been in theatres and watched myself. Um, and then of course there's all the drugs, the anaesthetics, the change in environment. Like she said, they're normally at home possibly with a long-term partner because it tends to be the elderly that have these hip operations and women. So there's all sorts of changes that this person would have been exposed to, um, which influenced their confusion and their susceptibility to confusion. Um, and of course, the, um, some of the problems is the culture, of course, and how carers care for the confused, their attitudes that can determine the quality of care. I, I did briefly mention as well the 
uh, aspect of um, a philosophy of care. Um, hol holistic care was banded around a lot um, when I was doing my training, um, especially in the 90s, and other th forms of uh, therapeutic care. But on, as pointed out, on a very busy, acute ward with limited staff, changing staff patterns, changing shift patterns, there's not always time, money, or the environment to encourage holistic care. We talked quick, briefly about the named nurse concept. Um, this this is okay in theory, so this, but it doesn't always work in practice because of the changing patterns, the turnover of staff. You get bank staff, you get agency staff, all working in this busy environment, not always providing continuity of care for the elderly confused. So quite often, cot sides, medication is used in order to control this vulnerable group who can hurt themselves, can hurt others. Um, the ideally, we would like a, a, an environment that is conducive to caring for this client group, this patient group, the um, confused elderly patient who's undergone brutal surgery, because it is brutal, maybe that's an inappropriate word, it's tough surgery then, you know, and they, they're taken away from their home, they've lost their mobility, their independence to a certain, certain extent. And a lot of people do recover from a temporary type confusion as well. So this is an interesting set of interviews. There's more to come. I've decided to go back over them over and out for now.